Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Amazons. Welcome to Amazons. Today we'll be talking about domestic violence an issue that affects each and every one of us, either directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we all know one or two people who has, been, who has gone through this. Bimbo, Aisha, what is domestic violence? <sighs> For me, domestic violence is it's not only about the physical abuse. There's also the emotional side of it. There's a psychological side of it. And you know, for us women, we're very sensitive, especially at certain points in our life. Take, mm. for instance, you're married, you just had a baby. Mm. And of course, you're fighting the balls because we, you know, we all pile on mm. pounds when at that point in time. Yes. <laughs> Some women are lucky and it doesn't happen. Okay, but you know, basically, and at that period, you're very sensitive about your weight and everything. And just imagine, and then your husband comes up and says something like, you're so fat and unattractive. Who would want you? Okay. That so, in itself so, so is verbal, chipping verbal away. Abuse there's verbal, is, yeah, it, chipping away at, at, at domestic violence. Yeah, okay. who you are, what yeah, you are, okay. taking away your confidence mm. in yourself and Actually, your beliefs. So domestic violence is um, any form of abuse that happens in a home, mm -hmm. in a domestic setting. Mm. It could be verbal, like yeah. Mimbo has said, it, mm. could, it could be physical. Mm. Anything that makes you, uh, that give, puts you down yeah. uh, at a point where you begin to have self-doubt about yourself, you begin to lose self-esteem, self mm -hmm. you begin to lose self-confidence about yourself mm -hmm. because somebody is constantly reminding you no, about the nothing. flaws in you wow. and is not trying to um, uh, make you appreciate what, what you are, who you qualities are qualities oh. are in you. So yeah, yes, it, it, yes. But mostly, yes, mostly we find out that it could be about control, but but sometimes you know I, I like to look at I like to look at it from not just the the victim's uh, you know perspective, but also the abuser. Why would you abuse somebody else? Why would you physically abuse someone, emotionally abuse someone, if there wasn't something wrong with you? Okay, we we know what domestic violence is. Okay, who does it affect? Everybody. It affects. It affects is it just the victim? No, no, no. Not, not the victim. Everybody. If, if, if how did it come about acquiring or imbibing mm. the act of abuse? Because I don't think anybody was born mm. to physically or verbally want to abuse another person. So is that is, is a, a psychological habit. process yeah, that that, is that starts from you know somehow. So basically, to buttress your point, you're saying that um, domestic violence affects children who are born into such environments and they in turn actually begin to inflict the same exactly. abuse on, on their and it becomes a vicious circle and sometimes you find the exact opposite happening you have people who grew up in a, in such an uh, environment who would not touch anybody who would think that the idea of raising their hands against another is just the worst thing that could possibly happen mm -hmm. You do have those who just go the other way entirely and say, never, never will I allow this to happen. Never will I be a part of this. Okay. Even though I lived it for, you know, my youth, growing okay. up, my childhood, this is what I experienced, but I will never be a part of it. What are the signs that, that, that channels you to pinpointing and saying, no, this has become, you know, an abuse? You know that um, an expression of aggression in any form is violent. Whether you throw a shoe against mm -hmm. the wall, whether you kick a door in mm -hmm. without the keys, mm -hmm. or you, 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 you use a fist to break a glass, mm -hmm. that act mm -hmm. in itself is violence. Is violence. Okay. And once you can do that, you are just close to expressing that aggression, mm -hmm. that act. Okay. And I think one that is vulnerable. Yeah. Okay. I think if we're careful enough, most of us can recognize the signs when mm. we first meet whoever it is that comes into our life and has a tendency okay. to be that aggressive mm. if we are looking out for it. It's something that is blatant, mm. you know. It is blatant. You know, raise voice, aggression, argument, throwing so, things and everything. Some of the signs. These are the signs so, of the Some of them. Anyway, well, we, we need to now think, what can we do about it? Right. And in order for us to, we, we have someone here who is going to tell us what we can do about it and, you know, how to go about seeking help and everything. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Amazons. We're still talking about domestic violence and we have with us today a representative from Project Alat, a non-governmental organization. Please welcome Kate Ibiansi. Thank you for coming. Thank you. You are very welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Isanil. Wow. Kate, Thanks. could you please just tell us what you do? Project Alert is a non governmental women's rights organization that was set up in January 1999. Okay. And the vision was to educate society on the various forms of violence against women that exist and to also render practical support services to these female victims of abuse. Okay. I joined Project Alert three years ago, a little over three years ago, mm. and I work as the, the program officer in charge of human rights education. Now, from, you guys have been here since 99? Yes. It, do people actually come in and report cases of violence? Because you know we're a society of, mm. you know, just take everything that's given to you, sweep everything under, under the, carpet, the carpet, don't say anything. Nobody so wants do to Do people talk actually about come it? out? People are coming out. Maybe at the beginning, in 99, the number of women that come out were very few. Okay. Because it had to be someone who has gone through real abuse mm. for her to be able to step out. Mm. But as of today, we have women who come out, we have women who talk, mm. we have women who call in. Some of them even ask people to report on their behalf. So people are coming out. But we just think that we need more people to step out because the number of women who speak out about the abuse they are suffering is very minute compared to the number of women who are actually suffering actually abuse. Suffering. Okay. Um, in terms of um, reaching out to the people who are actually affected by this um, situation and everything, I mean, what kind of um, awareness and how, 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 how is it easy to actually locate you people? Because a lot of these people who go through this might not be, they might not even know where to go for help. Exactly. Is there a helpline? You know? Yes, we a have shelter. a helpline. You do? We have a shelter. A helpline? Yes. Good. We have a shelter. Okay. And uh, when women call in, all we do is, as far as we know that that woman's life at that moment is not under threat, okay. we find a way of helping the woman get to us because okay. we don't go to people's houses. Okay. So when we get calls, is to find how best can we get these people out of that abusive okay. environment. Then when they get to us, we refer them to our shelter. Where can they get your number from? Um, in the last two years, we've had our helplines, our numbers running on Wazobia FM, on Cool FM. Okay. I can even give that here. Okay. Yes, the go hotline. ahead and tell us the number um, that we can reach you on. 080-5200-4698. Could you repeat that, please? 080-5200-4698. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Okay, so how, how, how regular, how often do you have these cases of domestic violence, violence against women, you know, how, what's the frequency? On a daily basis, I can't remember any day I have been at work that somebody does not walk in with a complaint. Wow. Okay. And, uh, and uh, what happens at the end of the day? Do, do these women um, leave that abusive environment and start as a different line? For some, they do. For others, they will give you several reasons why they don't want to leave. Mm -hmm. What we have come to find out over time is a lot of women want to leave, they want the abuse to end, but they don't want to leave the marriages or the relationships. Okay. So for them, they will tell you, please call him and advise him, okay. or do whatever, let him stop okay. what he is doing. They don't want to leave, okay. but they just want the abuse to end. Okay, good. When someone walks in through your door, um, could you just briefly let us know what happens, what you do, the first step you take, the second step, and the proposed outcome, mm -hmm. what they can expect, the kind of help they can expect from you. When a woman or a young girl walks in through that door and say, I have a complaint, okay. there are counsellors waiting Good. To, Counseling first. Good. to listen to her because okay. we want to know what exactly brought you. Okay. Okay? And they'll go on and on and tell you, you know, things that could be scary at times, but we try as much as possible to help them understand that they are not alone, 
and there are people here at least who are willing to listen to you and walk through with you all the way and for us one of our processes is by the time women finish telling us their story we don't take it hook line and sinker as okay, much good. as we know that that woman is not lying okay we still do not take it that okay everything she has said is 100 so you do verify we try to verify good. and the way we do this is by inviting whoever the woman says is abusing her okay wow. and i can and tell you them? yes in 80 85 percent of the time we have them coming into the office to come and defend themselves wow okay so okay. so from that point from the point of cancelling, from the point of, um, verification. Uh, of verification, what is the next step? If you verify that there's been um, uh, one form of abuse or another, usually it is physical abuse that we're talking about now. What do you then advise? Do you, um, do you advise them to, um, like they will say when you go to the police station, it's a domestic matter, go and settle it. Or you give them the guideline is steps to follow and if these if these steps you follow these steps and there are no changes these are the consequences do you do you take um i'll just quickly uh, respond to what you said about the police what our work entails is letting the society know that there is nothing private about domestic violence and so once a woman comes out to say i have been abused mm. what we do is we have heard from the other person we begin to look at the options there are several options okay. again you look at what does this woman want from our own point of view, we don't tell a woman this and this you must do. Okay. But as experts, we sit down and in listening to you, we can actually paint a clear picture of what that woman may likely be going through. Okay. And so based on that, we give options. Okay. And in talking with the couple, because most times when we, the first step for us is mediation. We okay. want to see, is there a way we can you know, mediate okay. and restore peace back to this kind of home? And where we find out that mediation fails, then the option is open to the woman to say, okay, I want to take a walk. Mm. And if she says she's taking a walk, we have the lawyers there who will take up, who will give, we give free legal aid. Okay. So okay. the lawyers yes. are there to take mm. up the legal aspects mm. of such a case. Okay, when you talk about mediating in, a, in, a, in such a horrible situation, because I, I think it's horrible for anyone to go through, you know, the kind of any um, form abuse. Violence. Any form of oh, violence, abuse. actually, is inexcusable, actually, to be mm. honest. But when you talk about mediation, I'm trying to think that for you to mediate on such matters and everything, do you, do you take time out to actually look for what is actually causing the person who is, being, who is being abused to abuse his victim or her victim? In the course of talking with them, because like I said, it's not a one-off thing. Okay. A woman comes in, makes a report, and we send a letter to the person, and he comes, mm -hmm. and we talk. And the next time, we arrange for both of them to come together. Okay. In talking, we are able to isolate. We pick issues. We can say this. They may not tell us. But in talking with them, we can say this and this and this are likely the issues these people are facing. And one after the other, we begin to take them through it. Okay. That way, you know, okay, some of the men will come out and tell you, she said I did this, but she did this first. Okay. You know, and that's where we talk about mediation because really okay. it's, it's horrifying to, to know that. When we sit down here talk about domestic violence. Now it sounds like it's, it's a tech thing. It's not. There are women who can practically not open their mouth and tell you their stories themselves. Because domestic violence here goes beyond physical beating. Yes. There's psychological trauma that comes yeah. with it. Yeah. There is also a sexual aspect of it. Yes. And so Emotional these women, well. these yeah. women, when they start telling you their stories, it's, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And so um, beneath all of this, most of them will tell you, I still love him. Well, that so, could be the, the, they call it an abuse person syndrome. Mm. Because once you're used to being treated in a particular way, oh, yeah. you begin to so, actually think that's, that's what the you way, deserve. that's what you deserve. Mm. So no. apart from those who come in and talk about love, what other reasons do they give for, for going back to Oh, children. Or my children, yeah. Yeah, my, yeah, my, my yeah that's what they say. They go back yeah, because yeah, um, they bring them out and mediate. Abusive relationship, abusive relationship. So for some of them, it's their children. They'll tell you, I don't want another woman to raise my children. And so because of that, they want to go back. For some others, it's what will my family, in my family, there's, been, there's never been a divorce. And I don't want to be the first person. And several reasons, what the church will say, what uh, 
members of the family will say, what the society will say. And so you see a lot of them wanting to cover up. And endure. And endure. Even when it is very obvious that their lives are at risk, mm. some of them will want to still take the chances. Mm. Though for, so, for some of the cases we've handled, we've had some success stories okay. of even very bad situations that we were able to we're mediate able to and yeah. we got good results from okay. them. And in following up with the couple, you get to find out, yeah, things have improved. It's no longer what it used to be. There's much more respect now. Nobody treats the other person like a piece of, a piece of trash and all of that. So, but then basically what we are saying is that women should be able to speak out. They should begin to talk. A lot of okay. are, there, are, there, are, there, I mean, are there measures that you, you propose or things that you put a set aside for children? Because it's one thing for an, abuse, an adult to be abused. What about the children? children? Because you can't isolate that. It's yeah. not just about the woman who walks in. What about the children who have actually witnessed this, this abuse. abuse going and on? some of them are even abused. Or some of them are also victims. Victims of, of abuse. It's, when we talk about women, Project Alert on Violence Against Women, we are not just for women. Okay. Because we know that you cannot talk about women without talking children. Exactly. And you have young girls before you talk about women. Yes. So this thing is women, young girls, children. For us, children who are in these abusive relationships, we, we have a lot of sympathy towards them. Okay. And in Lagos State today, I, I think the child rights law of Lagos State has made things a lot, lot easier. Mm, okay. We can easily refer them to specialized children's centers. Okay. For some of these children, they really need to be talked to because some of them have grown up to believe that violence is a way of life. Yeah. They, they do it to other children at school, they do it to their neighbors, they, they think the way daddy bullies mommy, that's the way it, it should be. be. You know, so for some of them, by the time they come into the shelter, it's not just the women we are trying to uh, talk to, but we also help the children to see that life is not about being violent or abusive on the person who you think is weak. Mm -hmm. but what, you know, I, what, what I would like to know is, um, for some of these women who decide to stay in that abusive environment when obviously mediation didn't work and nothing else worked mm -hmm. and they're talking about the children and they say they're going back they're going to stay there because of their kids do you do you explain how terrible how detrimental it is for the children yes we to do. be and they still even after hearing all that still go we back. do we do there are cases where we get the family we've had a case where a family we were going through we we're having sessions with them because it was like nothing was working mediation was not working okay. at every point is either the woman says she doesn't want this or the man says he doesn't want that so it was just not working and we got the children in because they had teenage children okay. and it could shock you to know that the teenage daughter at the time said she doesn't want to get married because she was already filled with fear mm. of what happens in mm. marriages that okay. she had told her classmates in school that she doesn't want to get married okay. and at that point we had to bring the, the parents in to listen to their children can you imagine the picture you're painting for this these child. kids? Okay. And you know, it, it was very emotional because I don't think the woman saw it from that angle. Okay. She just felt, I've been abused and the only thing I want, I just want to get justice. But she didn't know the impact it had on okay. her children. A marriage that exposes your children to violence, a marriage that you, exposes you to violence that you are not happy in. Mm -hmm. Does it have anything to do with the empowerment yes, of the woman? Yes, to a great extent. For cases of domestic violence especially, you cannot rule out empowerment entirely. But that's not 100% of the case because in some of these instances, the women are even the breadwinners. So it's two ways. Where we see that a woman is thinking, because I am totally dependent on this man, I cannot make it on my mm -hmm. own. So for that reason, let me go back. We, we offer some kind of assistance we have had to train some women give them skills acquisition for some of them we know that this woman's life is in danger we try to provide maybe a startup grant for them to start something because okay. you know the reason why she's going back to this relationship is because she feels she cannot survive okay. on her own hmm. okay good good this is this is for me uh, uh, violence of any sort is is just it's, not allowed it's, it's unacceptable it is unacceptable anyway. also what i'd like to find out is after you've met, you, you know, you've done your mediation and you've, you've done your verification and everything and you do help people, do you also sort of like do follow-ups? It's not you just talk to them and then they go back and 
six months down the line, they're back, mm. at, you know, back, you know, square, square one, one again. Exactly. What do you do? For, are there things that you set in place to do follow-ups follow -up. to make sure that, you know, everything is these okay. things doesn't happen again? Like I said, it's not a one-off thing for us. Every woman that steps into that office, we don't just let go that way. Okay. We, from time to time, especially when they come back, some of them call us to tell us, okay, it's better now. He's more responsible, mm -hmm. he's providing for the children, he's no longer aggressive. He's no... But even at that, periodically, we have their files. Okay. So we want to know the mediation we gave, mm -hmm. how is it playing out? You know, from time to time we get back to these women. But one good news is, for some of them, when they go back and it becomes rosy, they change their numbers, so <laughs> you are unable to get. Yeah. <laughs> you can't reach them. Yeah, sort of and block that out. Yeah. Of never happen kind so of thing. and wow. somehow when you get to meet them, they'll tell you. One came in. She brought someone else to come and report. And I looked at her. I said, I think I know this face. She said, Yes, I was here some time ago. By the time she called her name. We tried your number several times. What happened? Actually, after that mediation, everything has been... She even has a baby. After that, we said, oh, that's good. So, so there are no visitation. Okay. You do not follow up by We visiting. don't go to clients' houses. Okay. Except in very uh, rare cases where we know that someone's life is in danger and we need to get the police to go to the place and get someone out. We don't go to clients' okay. houses. Now, now well, for some of your success stories, don't these women, this women, don't they want to come out and talk? Because I think it, it, that would touch so many mm. other women when they realize that, you know, this woman went through it and got out of it and look at her, she's there, surviving. There are a few of them who are willing to talk, but generally you find out that this societal thing, I don't want to come and talk. I have children. Okay. People will trace, children. yeah. People yeah. will trace it to my children. My children will they, they'll stigmatize my children. And there's the possibility I'll go back to this marriage tomorrow and all of that. So for oh. some of them, they'll tell you, I just want this thing to be over. I don't want to come out public. But what you said is very right because I know people want to identify What's with you? someone with a face. Anyway, um, I'm going to have to stop you there. We're out of time. Oh, but I would like to say thank you very much no, no, for coming. No, no. Sorry, we need to ask, do you ever get men coming to report <laughs> that they've been physically... Yes, uh, I, can, you? I, can, yeah. I, can, I can say that. <laughs> there are men who have come in in response to calls and they will tell you that actually is the woman that is violating <laughs> them, not wow. them violating the woman. We've had such cases. Welcome back to the Amazons. We're still talking about domestic violence. Wow, oh, kids. This, this, <laughs> for me, this is just, but, when we look at this, do we talk to the men? Why do men beat their wives? Or why do women, I know in, uh, in some cases, Men are also abused. I know this. So why do why 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 does anyone have to be violent? Why do you feel the need, the urge to be violent? It um, from researches it has shown that violence, domestic violence, is um, a way to show control. Mm. It's deeply rooted in control. Mm. We we live in a male-dominated world. And you find out that so many men want to, they don't just want you to believe they are there, they want you to see it and know it that mm. they are there. And it's their way it has to be. So that way, you, that's why you have people raping young girls. Because it's just about dominance and control, basically. Okay. Do you have any cases of men who have been um, <laughs> domestically abused? <laughs> By, by your wife. Violated. Have you had any such cases of men coming to also report about uh, domestic violence? Actually, that, that's a sight to behold, actually. Imagine a man walking in no, a, some, no, a I, typical I, I know, African have, man going have, in and saying, I'm being abused I mean, by my no, wife. No, I have heard of cases. Actually, we abuse. have not had men walking in directly to come and report because we are project a lot on violence against women. Okay. But we've had men who, in response to our calls, have come to tell us that, in the real sense of the word, is this woman that is abusing me, not what is it's not the, what she said. There's this particular man that walked in and an elderly man, and he said, "Lawyer, please, oh, let me show you." He removed his belt and pulled his trousers down and said, "The wife used belts." to oh beat goodness. him uh -uh. okay so it's not when we talk domestic violence here we are not saying it's just women that get affected 
men also are affected. But you just find out that the number of women who are affected by domestic violence is much more than, than, than the men. men. And again, okay. the men don't want to talk. Because well, I mean, think about I don't it. want to talk. <laughs> in, 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 a, in a community like ours, in our society, to come outside and stand and say, "My wife." I told them to talk. That if they talk, we will defend them. That would be. But laughing is not funny. But you know, really, actually, it's a sort of very no, reaction. It's, it's yeah. actually, you know, there's some issues that you just can't help, but you can't cry, but you just have to laugh. Yeah. You no, know, we should cry for the men as well. No. We feel bad. Domestic violence against men no, and women, no. wrong. It's wrong. not allowed. Mm. Not, it's men wrong. against um, men or women, or women. Mm. Or children. Children, mm. children so are, are, are uh, children domestically abused, abused yeah. in the home by their parents. Mm -hmm. Have you had any such cases of where a child under 18, 16, where a child has been brought to your notice as having suffered some form of Domestic violence. In 2009, January, we had um, a young girl. She turned 16 mm -hmm. in January. But a few days before she turned 16, she called the hotline and came into the office. Her story was that she was 14 when the mm -hmm. father started sexually abusing her. Oh my goodness. And initially, you, just your reaction now, everybody was like, what? We were resuming on the 4th of January. And she came into the office on the 4th of January. And for us to resume with such a case, it was like, what? And we said, what happened? What happened? And she said the father suspected that she had had a sexual experience. And to cleanse her, he started sleeping with her from the moment she her turned 14. Her, her father stepfather? Her biological father. And every time she attempted to run away, he told her, if you run, I'll take on your sister because she had two siblings, two other siblings. And at that point, we said, this is on head of where what is about the family. Their mother? mother, she's a foreigner. We got her. That's another thing. We got her because we got to the police. The police went to the house, brought the woman because this man will lock the family, the entire family in and go out. And, you know, we got these people out. And just about a week after the woman stayed in the shelter, she said she wanted to go back to her husband. And we were asking her, are you aware of what your husband is doing to your daughter? It took her months to come to terms that her husband was actually sleeping with her teenage daughter. We have had several other cases. That is even that of a sexual nature. What about the physical one? You see Max. And you see, it's worse with children who are brought to come and serve in homes. Yeah. They are, they, some of them are brutalized, not just abused. You know, where you tell a child to sleep in the kitchen. I'm saying this for all the women out there to also know that. The way you treat somebody else's child is the way you invariably treat your own. Because yeah. if you don't show care to someone else's child, mm -hmm. no matter the care you try to show to your child, it's, not, it's, mm -hmm. it's in vain because mm -hmm. the true nature of who you are will show. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and you, you have a child who is in your care, instead of you to protect that child, you beat this child. There was a particular case, I was sharing it with you earlier on, of a young girl, a nine-year-old, mm -hmm. that was brought in to serve as a ward mm -hmm. to a lawyer. She is a lawyer. And this woman had an 11-year-old at that time. This nine-year-old would wake up early in the morning to boil water for them to take their bath. And on a particular day, this woman beat her up with wire, electric wire, beat her up, and the girl still had to go to school. It was the teacher that noticed that the child had blood stains on her back. And in trying to find out what happened, what happened to you? The child said, my, my auntie beat me. And that was how they brought her from Festac to the office. And we were like, who could have done this to a fragile looking child like this? And we found out this woman was a lawyer. And she, she thought she was influential. She went to the police, wanted to arrest the school and all of that. But we told her it cannot happen. What you have done is against the law. And eventually, we got the family of the child to come and take the girl away, but they paid for it dearly. Okay, just 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 hearing these stories, I am sad. That's the. the I don't think, think sad even expresses it properly. Mm. And and you do this day in, day out. It's, you hear stories like it's this a daily occurrence. Yeah. How do you cope? Mm, that's, I think that's another side of the story. For some of us, what we do is, 
it's not like we are developing thick skin. But what it tells us is that there is nothing new happening. It's, no, no, it's not news anymore. That's why I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked at anything. I'm only shocked at the way people still show surprise that these things are happening. Thing. Because women come in, a woman has come in with a beautiful weave on, on her head, and we didn't know what was happening, and she pulled it. Her ear, the husband used a cutlass. Mm. He almost cut off the ear. But you see, you know what, well, let's, let's, let's move away from domestic violence. You see, I find that to get to domestic violence, it's a build-up. Yeah. Because domestic violence is actually, I mean, it becomes domestic violence when it's a, it's a pattern. It's something that's repetitive and someone keeps doing it to you in order to gain control over you. But I think there's a build-up to it because it doesn't just, the man doesn't just get up one day and start, you know, um, hating the woman or beating the woman and everything. I find that it usually starts with emotional, verbal abuse. You know, that's, that's what I find. You and know, the physical one is just And then the, the physical one social. is basically when he gets to the crescendo where the man has done everything he can possibly do and, you know, the victim is still there and still accepting it. So it's like, look, I've done everything to you. What else can I possibly do to you apart from begin to batter you? You domestic know, violence so is a cycle, like you said, it's yeah. a cycle. It actually starts with those looks, those yes. controlling attitudes. Yeah. What's, who just called you? What did the person just say? It starts with those, like you said, it's to gain control. Yes, control and or also someone who has no self-esteem at all whatsoever. Mm. Because if you have self-confidence, you believe in yourself, you know what you're about. You're not bothered if your friend is receiving 25 mm. phone calls per second. Mm. Apart from control, I, I mm. also think that we should look at the emotional, the, the psychological background of the person who is doing this. Do you know what, what about if you relate the domestic violence to bullying? We call it bullying because it happens in, in schools, the, oh, yeah, but it's still the same thing. And I find that children who bully other children, why do they do it? It's to gain control. It's to gain control. It's because they, look, when, yeah. it, when you know, they it, see it, something it, in you that they don't now, have. It now also goes back to the beginning of what she said. For you to physically or abuse somebody in a domestic setting, mm -hmm. it means that at one time or another, you were exposed to that violence. Mm -hmm. You grew up in, in that kind of setting, that mm -hmm. kind of environment, mm -hmm. such that it, it grows with you. You do not see anything it's a wrong normal with thing. It's, it's okay. actually, it, I, I, I think I, I beg to differ. Most I beg no, to differ on that. that. Most, that most, of time, most of the time, some of most of the time, people who is. become abusive in later life experience abuse. Either they witnessed it or they experienced it. But you know what? Sometimes uh, you know people falling into bad groups, bad gangs pressure sometimes. I'm sorry, I've heard of cases where a man and a woman got married, everything was fantastic, things were going well and everything, boom, the man loses his job. Which you creates self-doubt after a Boom, point. they get robbed. You know, before you know it, he's losing everything, he's losing control. And, you know, the wife is not able to understand that things have changed, she's got the pressure of new children on ground, things need to be done, bills have to be paid, she now finds herself doing the things that the man is supposed to do and then she loses that respect and you know take everything away from a man but don't take his respect away you know and before you know it a very decent guy who's grown up in a good family he's never seen his father beat his mother before starts pummeling his wife because that's the only way he can control out of frustration it's it's it's, it's you, know, that, you, you see the sorry madam go ahead you see i was going to say you still cannot justify no, you can't. That, that she's not, not no, no, I'm, I'm actually not justifying from, it. But I'm not, just sometimes saying not a circle in it's the sense not that you're about abuse and then you're abusing. Mm. But that, that's why I said. I said in most instances, it's not a hundred percent thing. Mm. But then, like we, we always say, we don't at any point give excuses for anybody sort of violence. to be violent. Oh no! Because it, the question we ask at times is: this man that thinks he wants to take out his frustration mm. on his wife mm -hmm. in his office, if he has a female boss. Mm. How many times has he taken out his frustration on the boss by slapping her? Mm. 
Exactly. Well, because if we can control you know, himself you in his you office, you can't equate it to that. Mm. No, because if we say, if we want to give it as an excuse, so many people will walk away with such excuses mm. that it was frustration. Must it be the woman mm. in your house that okay, you would turn I, that frustration mm. on? Okay, some, something I, happened I, in this I, country recently that has me scared. <laughs> no, I'm serious because I, I, I tell people a lot. I talk about all kinds of things all the time and where it could lead. And now, a man stabbed his wife to death. Wow. In Nigeria. And that is the one that made the news. There are other cases that haven't made it, you know, to light. People don't know about. Mm. Is this what we're, I mean, how on earth do you get to that point? Did you guys hear about it? Did Project Alert hear about this? Yes, Project Alert heard. Project Alert has been involved from the moment we heard. The, the, the thing is, one of the reasons why we are saying people should speak out is that we observe that that is where domestic violence is headed. We heard that of Titi because for some reasons some people heard of it and brought it out in the open. There are several men and women who are dying in their homes on a daily basis without anybody hearing. Okay. And we are saying enough is enough. We don't have to die because yeah. we want to remain married. We've been involved in that case. And we are planning, I'm going to use this medium to say it, we are planning a walk okay. on the 7th of September. Okay. Because, this year? Yes. Mm. Because mm -hmm. of that. We want to tell, it's not a women thing alone. Mm -hmm. I'll be there, I'll be part of that. It is not, it is everybody. Let's all, because this city belongs to a family. Mm -hmm. She was working somewhere, so she has a community. Mm -hmm. She attended the church. Mm -hmm. She had friends, she had siblings, she had a daughter. Mm. She so, had neighbors. She had neighbors. Mm. So Total. if it happens, it affects every one of us, mm. one way or the other. Mm. We didn't know her. I didn't get to know her before then. Okay. I only heard of her in death. Okay. Okay, so what we are saying is we can all stop this. We can begin to talk about it. Because when you said, what are we doing to let people know what they can? We are saying talk. Because if you keep mm. quiet, God forbid, you might be the next city. Do you know what? I don't know if they have the this law here as well, I don't know how it's done here, but I know that in some places, when, when, when there's a case of, a, of domestic violence and the police are called in and everything, if they come in and they actually see that the woman is physically abused or bleeding and everything, even if she doesn't want to press charges, they have the right to take her away forcefully against her will, you know, and press charges for her. And of course, give her counselling. And counselling as I well. I think that's what the Domestic Violence Law of Lagos State has tried to incorporate. Incorporate, yes. okay. In that law, you have um, responsibility as a third party to report okay. on behalf of someone. Because okay. some of these people, there was this very funny case. Mm -hmm. My boss got a call mm -hmm. from a friend of hers in the US mm -hmm. telling her, my sister presently is mm -hmm. being beaten by the husband. This was like 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. and sent the number. She called the lady and the lady was like, my mother and I, we are locked in a room right now. And my mother said, what can we do immediately to help you? Got okay. the police to go there. By the mm -hmm. time the police got to the house, the woman said, I don't want to go. I don't want him arrested. Anyway, we're out of time. I um, would like to take mm -hmm. somebody to actually thank you so much for coming here. And you've heard it all. We owe it to ourselves. We need to report it if you see people being abused. It's not just about just ignoring it and pretending it doesn't happen. There are people out there who spend their time and spending money and energy to actually offer help. So please, domestic violence is not acceptable and it should be stopped. And we all owe it to each other to make sure that it can't be, we bring it to an end. Welcome back. We're still talking about domestic violence. Wow, the woman, she it really came had... from Project Alert, painted a picture horrible. that is scary. Yeah. Painted a picture of women who have been um, suffered domestic violence and are keeping quiet. Mm. Women who are returning from domestic violence mm -hmm. 
to and that same situation. To that same situation. You see, that, that's actually what worries me. It's the fact that you, 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 they go through it. Then there's a little light at the end of the tunnel. You guide them to us there. And it's like they're so used to it and they go right back to it. That's what really worries you know, what, me. What, what I have found out from relating with a lot of people, a lot of vict victims basically, whatever kind of violence it is, is that um, they take most of the blame on themselves. They believe that they are yes. the part of, of, of the violence that was, you know, the, the violence that, that, that whoever it is. They think they deserve, they deserve it. it. That it was, it, it, it was that, that there's something wrong with them. And wherever they go, there will always be violence because there must be something that they are doing wrong. It affects them psychologically. They, they doubt themselves. It lowers their self esteem. I think that's, a, that's, 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 the, that's the same thing about what, what we say about it being a form of control. Because when you're in control of someone, you can, you can make them believe that what black is, is white. What is, the, what is the control, the lack one being? The control is if you do not have something to keep you as a woman if you have to leave a man but she just said even the women who are breadwinners in their families mm. suffer domestic because violence because they believe they deserve it so, on some level so, so yeah at but at the same point, time society at what point do you now take charge and take control of the situation you are in society you see society expectations sometimes you understand it abroad if you're a single woman there's it no stigma a but single still, mother, there's no stigma. You live a good life. You can pay your own bills. Your kids still go, they go to good school. They can have friends and nobody actually isolates them. But in the African setting, you're a single woman. But it still happens. It, you know, you, country, there's domestic violence. You, you know, in you, America, you can't everywhere. have a say. You're, you know, you're, 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 you know, you're isolated sort of. But you become an outcast. You become an outcast. So I think, outcast. So, and I think that's why some, country. I think that's why some women some would rather stay in a bad or uh, a, a bad relationship so, so, than come so out so of they, it. They, they, these women need education. We need to talk to no, ourselves. I, I think women, each, each, that each. we can take control of this situation. Yes. That you do not stick with a man who abuses you all the time, either emotionally, physically. It or is wrong. It, it is, is wrong. It is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. It is wrong for your children, for your sanity, for your health. Yeah, it is unacceptable. That is the message. Mm -hmm. And my, women should speak out. Well, about my conclusion violence. is like a plea to every person out there mm. who is suffering domestic violence. I get very emotional about stuff like this because I just I, I can't understand it. You, you can get away. Mm. There are people out there who will give you the support and the help you need. All you have to do is take that first step towards changing your situation. You don't deserve it. You are a great person. You deserve much, much better. Please, you know, use the number. If you are in this situation, ask for help. You will get it. Well, I know for women who are suffering domestic violence, it is difficult for you to accept the situation because one you want to keep your home you want your children to have a stable family yes but a family that suffers domestic violence is no longer stable mm. a family that whose mother suffers domestic violence does not have the confidence to face the society mm. so what you can do the gift you can do, give to your family and to your children is to take that first step and do something about domestic violence because it is a pattern if a man hits you once once he crosses the line, it will do it again. Again. they will continue will to do it. continue to hit you. And then if you, if you let the man know enough is enough, I do not have to stay in this marriage for whatever reason, mm. he will respect you the more. And then you can also empower yourself. I do not like it when women say, we are housewives. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? It's a prerequisite for, for being violated, is, basically. That is an avenue for a man to have total and absolute control over you. Mm. which means he can t treat you like that at his own whim and whim and purposes is that mm. the word mm. whatever he wants to do with you he can do it because mm. he knows that at the end of the day he pays the bill mm. but when you show that you can pay your own bill the man will respect you mm. well i i would conclude on on a note that um we shouldn't we shouldn't get away from the fact that domestic violence can happen to anybody both men and women and children as well and one thing we all need to try and focus on is it's wrong it's not something we should accept you know you need to speak out you need to try and get help there are people who would help you speak to a family and 
if you notice someone is being abused, please encourage them to come out and talk and everything. And I think we should just all try to do what we need to do. In conclusion, thank you so much for watching. And please try and get help. Try and watch out for each other. If you find anyone being abused, please don't just overlook it. Don't think it's the other person's business. Speak out. Help people. There are people out there who are ready to help. There are NGOs. There are shelters. There are places that you can go to. And above all, please, domestic violence is not something that anyone should have to live with or go through. Thank you so much.